we're going to look at the energies of ionic bonding, the energies involved in ionic bonding. And let's think about what needs to happen to for that that happens in 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 an ionic bond. Let's let's so 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 what 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 we can think about it is something like this. We have our sodium atom. We have our chlorine atom. And I'm using Lewis dot structures to illustrate the number of electrons around them. And what's going to happen is this, is we're going to have the sodium ion and we'll have a chlorine anion. So in other words, we're taking this electron, putting it onto the chlorine. Right? We could draw it something like this. We've done that. And and so th and then we're ready to make an ionic bond that between them. So so what we have to do is um, energies involved in ionic bonding. So first we're going to we have to take a, a valence electron to form a cation. And we saw um, um, that the um, ionization energy takes energy to form a, a positive ion, right? To take an electron away from, from an atom. So that, that is, it requires energy. So we're removing a valence electron to form a cation. This is ionization energy. We're going to the addition of an electron to form an anion. releases energy. So for the for for to go from the here to here, grabbing an electron, this is this is essentially electron affinity, if you recall. And and it it, it um it releases energy. Now it turns out that so so you might say, well this is this is all that's happening to form these this ionic compound, right? But but we really haven't formed the ionic compound yet. And, and the other problem is that the, the energy that you get from making an anion is not enough to compensate for cation formation. So it's usually, you usually, you, it usually takes more energy to form a cation and then it does than you get by making the anion. So it takes more energy to do this than it does to do this. Okay. And so, what, what, so why is it that we have ionic compounds if it's not energetically favorable? Well, we've forgotten one step, and that is that bond um, formation between positive and negative ions releases more energy. So bond formation between positive and negative ions releases more energy. Now, to, re to, to just, just to recall uh, the, the energy that would be involved in, in, in a release of energy, what is that from? Well, it's, it's, um, it's Coulomb's law, right? If just a quick review from, from, from say, like uh, high school physics. Right, Coulomb's law says that you get some energy, there's energy involved, K, between two charges and the radius that, that separates them. So, so K is this constant. Q1 and Q2 are electric charges of, uh, uh, on the ions. Okay, and, and R is the distance of separation. So, R is why we were talking about ionic radii in the last video and in the last section. Electric charges on the ions, that's easy to figure out. It's plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two, and so on. So you just take, this would be a plus one and a minus one here. Okay, just, just so you remember, um, if, if Q1 and uh, Q2 are the same sign, 
the energy is greater than zero and then you get a repulsion. And if Q1 and Q2 are different signs, right? If we have a positive ion and a negative ion, those are going to be attracted to one another. And so energy there is going to be less than zero and you get an attraction between them. Energy would be less than zero and you get an attraction. Okay, so 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 this is this is this is where this bond formation between the positive and negative ions releasing more energy is coming from. It's essentially just Coulomb's law, Coulombic attraction between a positive and a negative ion. Alright. So when we form this attraction between the positive and negative ions, ionic bonding results in the formation of a crystalline solid right it's it's a it's a it's a it's a crystal lattice And the way we oftentimes think about a crystal lattice is we have alternating sodium and, and, and chlorine ions that are, that are arranged in a 3D, uh, 3D lattice in, in three directions. Um, so, so let's think about this. So, so, so this, this, this crystal lattice that we make, we're packing positive and negative and positive and negative ions together so that we get this lattice. And because we're packing these positive and negative ions together, we get something called the lattice energy. It's a, it's a measure of, of that energy that we get. And lattice energy is, 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 is the energy. How do we, in other words, how do we measure, measure the energy that we get from neatly packing an ion, ionic substance together? Well, lattice energy is the energy required to separate one mole of an ionic solid into constituent ions in the gaseous state. That is the lattice energy. Let's draw it out as a reaction so it's easier to sort of visualize. We're taking NaCl solid, one mole of that, and we're making one mole of sodium ions in the gas phase and chloride ions in the gas phase. This delta H, the energy required, is the lattice energy. It's, of course, positive. Right? It takes energy to break down this thing. There are attractions between the positive and negative ions. Now, it's, it's actually kind of difficult to measure. It's difficult to actually measure this lattice energy. In other words, it's difficult to do this experiment. Take sodium chloride solid, make sodium ions and chloride ions in the gas state. Okay, so to be able to find, um, so, so, so to be able to find these things, find what the lattice energy is for a given ionic substance, what we have to do is use something called the Born-Haber cycle. Okay, so, so, so we're going to use, it's essentially Hess's law. So difficult, difficult experimentally. really hard to, to do this as an experiment and and so what we're going to do is figure out what the lattice energy is from the Bornhaber cycle
and we'll see why it's called the Bornhaber cycle in a moment. So as you remember, one of the things you could do with Hess's law is figure out what the a, a particular um, it, it, what a particular value is using Hess's. Yeah, sorry, what a particular value is for a difficult to experiment, difficult to do experiment delta H for a difficult to do experiment, and that's exactly what we'll do here. We're going to use something called the Bornhaber cycle. Okay. So I'm going to show you a there, there's the, the Bornhaber cycle is there's a diagram in your text and a a um, um, there's there's a, a a diagram in your text and a good illustration of the Bornhaber cycle and it works very well. I'm going to show you a slightly different version of the same one that I think is maybe a little bit more straightforward. But the, the main idea here is that is that how we find lattice energy is through the Bornhaber cycle, and, and it's just an application of Hess's law. All right, so what we're going to do is this, is I'm going to start here using an energy diagram where enthalpy is going up, so it wouldn't be delta, it would just be enthalpy is, is getting higher as we go up. And I'm going to start with sodium chloride solid. Okay, so what do we, so we have sodium chloride solid, NaCl solid. All right, um, to form that directly from the elements, so we'd have sodium solid plus half of a chlorine molecule, right? Chlorine exists as a molecule. Well, the, the difference in that would be minus 411 kilojoules. Okay, so, so now um, this would be the, this would be a, essentially a heat of formation, right? Heat of formation for sodium chloride. All right. So we have we have we've we've made sodium chloride from elements in their in their in in, in their um, uh, natural states. All right. So now let's let's go uh, make it a different way essentially. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call this delta H number one. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to take sodium ions. And chlorine ions. I'm just going to take the sodium ions and take them from the solid to the gas phase. So, so let me uh, make sure that that's clear. So here we've got sodium in the gas phase to chlorine in the gas phase. Right? That's going to take energy to do. Now in this case, it happens to be 108 kilojoules. All right. Next. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take sodium ions in the gas phase, which is what we have here, sodium from the solid to the gas. It takes 108 kilojoules. We're going to make a chlorine atom from a chlorine molecule. All right, so that would be 120 kilojoules. All right, and next, so we've made chlorine atoms from a chlorine molecule. Next, what we're going to do is up here we'll have sodium ions and chlorine molecule in the gas phase. So we're, we're ionizing sodium. We're going to call this, oops, sorry, we're going to call this delta H2. We're going to call this delta H3. Okay. So we've, we've taken sodium and chlorine elements in their, in their natural states, right? We've made the sodium into the gas phase. Sodium is in the gas phase here. We've broken up the chlorine molecule into a chlorine atom. Here, now we've ionized the sodium, that took energy. All right, 
Now we're next going to, this is delta H number four, we're going to get energy out when we make chlorine, a chlorine uh, um, ion, a chlorine anion. So we're gonna add an electron to gaseous chlorine. This would give us minus 349 kilojoules of energy. That would be number four, step number four. All right, so what do we have left? Oh, look at this, look at this. Going from here to here, this is called the lattice energy. So we have our delta H being, or lattice energy, we actually will call it, this would be our delta H number five. So with this, so we know the values of all of these things. We know the, the, the delta HF, one, two, three, four, these different steps. We simply can combine them and we'd end up finding that our delta H for the lattice energy would be minus 786 kilojoules. This is, this is an example. This is the Bornhaber cycle. You can see it's a cycle and it's quite simply a, 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 a special um, application of Hess's law to be able to find a value of something that is difficult to determine experimentally. Again, your textbook has a slightly different version of this, but it's, the result is the same. And I, I think this one's a little bit more straightforward, and I hope that it helps in comparing or, or learning about the Born-Haber cycle um, to be able to figure this out.